Look at this photo carefully. I want you to tell me, how does it make you feel? Do you feel that like you can trust this woman or sympathize with her? Or does her appearance frighten you a little bit? Perhaps the more closely you look at her features, the more you look into her eyes, the more uncomfortable you find yourself feeling. There's clearly something not quite right here. Well, congratulations. You've just proved that you're not a robot without having to click on pictures of buses and typing out oh, random strings God. of letters. Kepschke. This face was actually generated by a neural network. I took it from the website, this person does not exist. Every time you refresh the page, a neural network based on NVIDIA's StyleGang algorithm creates a new face. This is sometimes used by scammers, taking these portraits of non-existent people and using them to register fake accounts on social networking sites, forge documents, or pass them off as creators of crypto projects. But these computer-generated people continue to unnerve me. There's clearly something a little off about them. Today, we're going to look into the future and discuss what's on the horizon for the human race. My name is Emily, and this is SumSub, a channel all about how to survive in the online jungle. I'm pleased to invite you today on an expedition to Uncanny Valley. Now, do you remember these guys? In 1987, they became the symbol of MTV. In fact, the channel began its first European broadcast with a clip of these pixelated little men from the Dire Straits Money for Nothing video. The video went on to become the best music video of the year and the hallmark of the Bosch FGS 4000 graphics station. At that time, it was considered a real breakthrough. The 80s were a time of incredible optimism about the future of computer technology. A wave of the first truly affordable computer systems had flooded offices and educational institutions. Computers were taking over television, the publishing business, the financial sector and we believed that that technology would bring new wonders. But 30 years later, and it was rugged Vikings who were making their attempt to capture cinema screens. 450 animators worked with Robert Zemecki's film. They processed the movements of the actors, working from recordings of a whopping 200 cameras. The production of Beowulf cost 150 million and it completely flopped at the box office. Despite all of the hard work of designers and animators, the audience just didn't like the characters. And this wasn't the first failure of computerized actors. A few years previous, there was a similar story with Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, and Zemecki's previous film of a similar style, The Polar Express, was hardly a success. So why did we like the characters of Money for Nothing, even though they barely move in the frame, and yet we didn't fall in love with the almost real heroes of Zemeckis? It's all about that word, almost. In fact, this effect was described in detail by an article by Japanese engineer Masahiro Mori back in 1970. And in 1978, Jassia Reichard translated the article into English for the first time, suggesting that we name the phenomenon described by Masahiro as uncanny valley. Now, what do you think the Japanese engineer wrote about since computer characters were still very far off in the future at that time? Well, Mori's research was dedicated to robots. Before the advent of Mori's research, engineers and science fiction writers were united in their opinion. The future belonged to humanoid robots. Machines should become as similar as possible to their creators. Now remember, all fiction was filled with androids. Androids, translated from Greek, means humanoid. Now, take a look at the first android from Great Britain. It was built by Captain William Richards in 1928. Eric, as the World War I veteran called his robot, made a real splash at the exhibition of the Society of Model Engineers. The robot on its stage gave a speech that opened the event. But don't you think he's still quite far from an accurate image of a man? Eric, in fact, is more similar to our angular heroes of the Dire Straits clip. Over the next half a century, robots began to resemble man more and more. Compact and powerful drives were at the disposal of engineers, and the development of electronics made it possible to control hundreds of motors and sensors in real time. Prototypes of robots began to appear that resembled a human, not only in appearance, but also in movement. But Mori argued that there was a huge obstacle in the way of progress. At first, as the mechanism begins to become human-like, it evokes positive emotions in people. But if you make a robot too similar to a human, then it actually has the opposite effect. Sympathy wanes, and in its place comes a feeling of anxiety, dislike, even rejection. Mori described this pattern for two types of objects at once, static and mobile, and revealed that for moving objects, in particular robots, this effect is much more pronounced. 
and Maury really was ahead of his time. When he wrote the article, he only imagined such robots. Therefore, he made comparisons with zombies or medical prostheses. But now we can see just how right he was. This is Sophia, the first robot in the world to officially obtain citizenship and a passport. Now, there's no doubt about Sophia's intelligence. She wittily answers the questions of TV presenters, enters into friendly skirmishes with Elon Musk, and speaks at the UN. What cheese can never be yours? What cheese can never be mine? I don't know. Nacho cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. However, there are clearly huge problems with her appearance. Sophia's facial drives can give her 60 different expressions, but could you really mistake her smile for a real person? Personally, she gives me the creeps. But why is that? Maury himself tried to explain the uncanny valley effect by using a person's natural fear of death. Over the course of our evolution, our brain has excellently learned to distinguish living objects from inanimate objects. A living person or animal doesn't invoke significant fear in us. Initially, inanimate objects, stone or wood, are also familiar for us. But if an initially inanimate object starts moving, it scares us. And this fear sits deep within us. Remember the Jewish legends about golems? They've been scaring humanity for hundreds of years. On the other hand, if you've ever been to Madame Tussauds, the wax museum, it's pretty unlikely that one of the exhibits there seriously scared you. We, of course, can understand that these are just wax statues and therefore we're not afraid of them. Instead, we can just wonder at the skill of the creators. But in the case of robots and CGI characters, another factor comes into play, death. The corpse of any living creature is an unambiguous danger signal to our brain. The cause of death can be a predator, a poisonous plant, a natural disaster. It doesn't matter what, but seeing even a dead pigeon or a fish floating in an aquarium and our brain sounds the alarm. Now cross this fear of death and inanimate objects coming to life and you get a reanimated corpse, Frankenstein's monster, Count Dracula or a zombie. Therefore, modern androids are not yet humanoid, but more zombie-like robots. Now you can be the judge yourself. Professor Hiroshi Shiguru has been creating natural looking robots for more than 30 years. He even created his own mechanical avatar. But let's be honest, would you really be able to get the two mixed up? So the neural network in our head is able to distinguish artificial characters, robots or CGI from ordinary people extremely well. But how does it do it? Well, it's all about mirror neurons. They're located in multiple different parts of our brain and are responsible for our ability to imitate, to copy the behavior of other people and to learn to talk. And they also determine our empathy level. Thanks to them, we can empathize with other people. When we communicate with another person, our brain closely monitors the facial expressions of our conversation partner. Our mirror neurons copy any micro movements of the facial muscles. And thanks to this, we can ascertain the emotions of our partner. Faulty operation of mirror neurons, according to one of the most popular theories, is actually one of the factors at play in autistic spectrum disorders. But in the case of androids, most of our mirror neurons simply do not receive familiar signals. The brain finds itself in an unfamiliar situation, and this is always interpreted by our consciousness as a threat. If you've ever spoken with people who've suffered a stroke or are maybe partially paralyzed due to some kind of health condition or accident, then you may have experienced an initial discomfort that made it difficult for you to look at your conversation partner. The same discomfort arises from insufficiently animate faces of robots or virtual actors. Why? The very best Hiroshi Ishiguro animatronics have 50 degrees of motion, but that's still too little. For example, just to smile, the body uses 57 facial muscles and their combinations are much more complicated than Ishiguro servos. Now this variability causes no fewer problems for 3D animators. Initially, they tried to take the approach of creating realistic models of the characters' faces with huge amount of detail, muscles and bones, but eventually switched to the technology of capturing the faces of real actors. And it was exactly this that played a cruel joke on the creators of Beowulf. Image capture works with a limited number of points and actors are required to act quite differently than they're used to in front of conventional cameras. This is exactly why this man has become one of the most sought after actors in Hollywood. Maybe don't recognize him. Well, actually you're looking at Gollum from The Lord of the Rings, Caesar from The Planet of the Apes, Captain Haddock from Tintin, and also King Kong and Baloo. His name is Andy Serkis, and thanks to his mastery of his facial muscles, the British actor has become a Hollywood superstar. The main secret to his character's success is that they evoke the correct response from our mirror neurons. 
Hence, we're able to empathise with these computer models as if they were living beings. But if we've learned to emotionally deceive people using motion capture, maybe we should try to deceive the neural network of our brain with an artificial neural network. Well, people have already begun to make such attempts. Do you remember my video about reviving pinup girls using the company DID's neural network? I deliberately used not only old photos, but drawings of people. And why? Well, it was to provoke the neural network to demonstrate the uncanny valley effect. When artists painted these girls, they idealised their faces, made them more symmetrical, aligned their features, removed small flaws. This, of course, gave them a special beauty and charm, and to our brain seems absolutely natural. But this was because our brain could still identify that they were drawings, and so could enjoy looking at them. But the moment I brought them back to life, I created digital zombies. They don't make us feel good, they actually scare us a little bit. In addition, we don't expect absolute perfection of a human face. In fact, we're even a little bit afraid of absolute symmetry. Look at these photos by Alex Beck. Now, these are real people. It's just that the photographer only used one half of their face, mirroring it in Photoshop. Asymmetry and minor flaws are what makes us recognisable as a living being. Symmetrical faces look unnatural, and this is often forgotten by the creators of robots or video game characters. But there's one final important point. In its six million years of existence, humanity has only been dealing with artificial beings for a few decades. Our brain has simply never encountered such objects before, but it's able to adapt incredibly quickly. Recently, I came across a study that may negate the uncanny valley effect. Dr. Kimberly Brink conducted a study of the emotional perception of robots by children aged three to 18 years. And the reaction of children who were aged nine years or younger surprised scientists. They weren't confused by the similarity of robots to humans, although older teenagers showed a clear dislike for these beings. Researchers have suggested that at a young age, people are more trusting. They don't automatically perceive a threat from these strange creatures. And with age, this perception of the world changes. We learn to perceive and interpret other people's emotions better and therefore become afraid of these unfamiliar robots. But there is another explanation. Our children are already used to living side by side with artificial beings. 3D characters have become an integral part of their world and the brain is not used to expecting them to fully comply with human behavior. Perhaps our children will stop separating artificial and real people in the same way that we have learned not to divide others by skin color. Maybe we'll learn to perceive artificial people as they are without waiting for the addition of hundreds of new surveys to their faces. Well, if you have small children, why don't you conduct a little experiment? Show them the footage from this video and ask them what they think about the characters we've shown here. And of course, if you do this, please share your results in the comments. We'd love to hear about it. In addition, technology sometimes develops at an unprecedented pace. Look at these photos. In which row do you have the most trust, the most confidence? The top row or the bottom? If you chose the top row, then the neural network has successfully managed to deceive you. But you're not alone. 223 people from a study which was published a few months ago also chose the top row. In February 2022, Sophie J. Nightingale and Harry Farid asked volunteers to rate how much they trust these individuals on a scale of one to seven. Consequently, the results of the neural network evoked the greatest trust and the photos of real people evoked the least. So now do you understand why network scammers are so fond of this person does not exist? It remains for me to add that digital artists have also learned to consciously use the uncanny valley effect to their own ends. Think of the White Walkers from Game of Thrones, the Dementors from Harry Potter, or the Nurses from Silent Hill. Now admit it, they're really creepy. It's good that they exist only on the screen, at least for now. Okay, so that is all for today. My name is Emily, this is SumSub, and thank you for joining me on this expedition through Uncanny Valley. Now, we would love to hear from you. What do you think about CGI characters? Are they realistic? Do you empathize with them? Leave your comments down below. We would love to hear them.